Hi, Dan here from Bravey TV. And I'm Carl. So, what are we talking about this time? We have got to debate today the two Panasonic little stills cameras. Yes. So we've got the GH5 versus the GH5S. And there's um, there's a lot more there's, there's a lot more differences between them than what you think. So they are very similar cameras, but they've got a lot of little yeah, in-depth little niggly differences that we um, can go between. I didn't realise how different they really were until we sort of... Sort of They're different enough it. that it's going to be really difficult for people who are trying to choose yes. between the two. I mean, it's a really difficult decision. Mm. So hopefully we can break it down a little bit and make that a little bit easier for people. Yes. Image quality. This is perhaps the biggest difference, yes. I think, between the two mm. because of the sensor difference. They are... Two different sensors. Yeah, they're the yeah. same size, they're both micro four thirds, um, but it's a completely new, different sensor yes. in the GH5S. It's not an adapted version of the same one. Um, it's a much lower megapixel. Yes, it makes it better for video. Absolutely yeah. it does, um, for several reasons. Better low light, um, yeah. less downsampling, so less moiré and everything like that. Yep. But what's really interesting, I think, is the differences in, in colour. Color. Yes. Um, I really do think the GH5S. So much better has better yeah, colour. It, it, hands down, it's so much nicer, especially straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, the the colour you get is a lot nicer. The skin tones are brilliant, the colour reproduction, things like how it handles yep. reds and greens and stuff like that. Yep. Especially when you start pushing the ISO up as well. Mm. Um, it handles colour oh, yes. a lot better. Um, partly down to the fact it has a dual native ISO, whereas Absolutely. the original one doesn't. Um, nope. And so that's partly why it's so good in low light, but the other reason yes. is this new design sensor and the lower megapixel count. So yes. it's a 10.2 megapixel sensor rather than a 21 megapixel sensor, which means that you each pixel on it is much larger um, and so can just capture way more light. And it mm -hmm. does make a huge, huge difference. Yes. The GH5 is so much better in low light than I thought it would be. It, yeah, it holds up a lot better than what a lot of people thought it would. And at ISOs which you actually use. Yes, I, yeah. So it's, uh, when you go into the ridiculous sort of ISOs, it does fall apart, as you would expect. Yeah. But it, in, in terms of sort Still of Still handles ISOs, them way better than this one, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in terms of the ISOs that you're going to be regularly using if you're in a low-light low situation, they work yeah. beautifully. We're not talking about 50,000 ISO and that sort of no. stuff. We're talking about 3,200 and 6,400. Yeah which are very practical, usable, and important ISOs yep. that anyone who's shooting in uncontrolled situations is going to have gonna use, to yeah. use. Yeah. You do put, if you're shooting weddings, anything like that, you do push your cameras up that far. And I think the images choice, yeah. are so much better on the GH5. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Easily. Um, in terms of image quality, you can, I mean, both of them shoot anamorphic. Yep. Um, you do get more resolution out of the original GH5. That high megapixel sensor. Um, so, you know, whether that, whether you it, use is that. It, it's, it's, it's 6K, 6K versus 5K. 5K so rather than 4K? Okay, cool. So it's not a huge difference, but um, the, the, the anamorphic was always one of the strengths of the GH5. It's yes. quite a niche area, but, but um, it nice is amazing to have, to have it. Yeah. such a small little yeah. camera, yeah. and you get some really lovely images. Yeah really cinematic um, in a very high resolution 6K. Yeah, from it's crazy. a tiny, tiny little camera. Mm, absolutely. Um, and then the last point we've got down, it's not a huge one, but you can shoot DCI 4K up to 30p on the S, whereas on the original 5, you can only go up to 24p. It's not oh, huge, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, you know, it's one of those little improvements that's sort of scattered around yep. in the S. Um, I think, it'd have to go towards the S with this one. Um, I want to give it quite heavily towards yeah. the S, I think. So, let's talk a little bit about lenses. Um, they're effectively the same. I mean, yeah. same mount, same you, size you can, you can sensor. Technically, technically they are, micro yep. thirds, but GH5S does have a wider field of view. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's overlooked a little bit as well. Sort of, not mm. many people know about it, especially like when we're doing uh, sort of tests with them side by side. It's a 
considerable difference. It's noticeably yeah. wider. It, yeah. it really is. Um, it's almost. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not even a subtle thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's almost it's like quite, it's halfway between Micro yeah. Four Thirds and Super Thirty Five. It's, yeah. it, it's not quite. But um, that field of view, no, you do notice it. You do notice it. If you're going to frame up the same same shot, and that's going to affect your lenses. Um, as far as I'm aware, all of the same lenses will still work. It's not wide enough to mean that some of the lenses don't cover the full sensor anymore. Yep. Um, but your 12 to 35, for example, that's on it here, is going to be a little bit wider on the GH5S than it is on yeah. the um, GH5. So, tie? Or yeah, I mean, do we want to give it slightly towards the GH5S because of it's wider? It's not necessarily better. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say tie. I mean, yes, it is wider, but. I'd say it brings it closer to the Super 35 standard, which we're all used yes. to. That's what we're used to with our focal lens. And so because it's slightly wider, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better. No. Wider is not better, it's just wider. But it is closer to, to the sensor size we're used to. Used to. Yeah. And so I'm tempted to give it just a sliver towards it's the It's not going to be by much. Okay, stills. Um, GH5 wins hands down with this one, really. I mean, the. I guess in low light, the GH5 is still going to be I better, guess. but overall. I mean, you're more like, if you're going to use this as a stills camera, you're going to get more out of the yeah. GH5 because of that higher yep. megapixel. 21 count. megapixels, yeah. absolutely. Um, the Which is twice as much. I w if, if stills is important to you, don't rule out the GH5S. It still just shoot very nice stills. Yeah. Yeah. But the higher megapixel is very, very, very welcome on yeah. the GH5. So, yep. towards, give it to the GH5? Yep, absolutely. So, in terms of video codecs, they're basically the same, that, yeah, right? Identical. I mean, um, it, they both give you long up and intra frame. They've got yep. so many different kind of choices in here. We've got 8 bit, we've got 10 bit, yeah. 400 megabits, 150 megabits long up. Yeah. They chucked the kitchen sink at it when it came, comes to codecs, Did. and they've kept it the same on both of them. Um, mm. So that's brilliant. It's a straight tie. Yeah. Straight tie. Really, this comes down to the price. Of the body only. Yeah, because the because lenses the, are the same. The lenses are exactly the same. You're going to no, use the same lenses. There's no sort of additional cost. This can be factored in anywhere. The difference. How much more expensive is the S than the five? Because it's that way round, isn't it? Yeah, the the S is more expensive. The S is sort of around the eighteen hundred mark. Oh, okay. So the five is around sort of the thirteen hundred, fourteen. So you're looking at about so, five hundred yeah. pounds more for the S than the 5 at the moment, because yeah. obviously prices, prices change so much. We don't normally talk about prices in these videos, yeah, because there's no point. They're out yeah, of date they're within, very <laughs> within a month. Very so, um, but as it currently stands, the S yes, is cheaper. Uh, more expensive. More expensive. Cheaper. <laughs> yeah. so, so I guess the, the, that comes five, down, yeah. if you, whether you think it's worth it or not. But let's give this one towards the 5. Yeah. It's cheaper. So audio is effectively the same as codecs. I mean, yes. they're, they're the same for most part. There is a few interesting little add-ons yes, that is the S introduced. It's just it's not massive, but uh, you've got the 5 volt power coming out of the 3.5. Yeah, they, they've just, got this tendency for describing it as phantom power in their yes. marketing, which I really disagree with because it's not phantom power. It's not going to power a You're not going to sort put of 12 to 24 yeah. volt um, sh shotgun microphone or anything like that. You need XLR outputs for proper power. Yeah. Um, this gives you about what I'd call trickle power, so five yeah. volts. And that's effectively only really useful for powering small little on-camera microphones like yeah. ones from Rode or Saramonic or um, anything like that. Um, the GH5S can power through its 3.5 mil as long as your microphone supports it. Whereas the GH5 can't. So, I mean, it's. You, you, you could give it ever so slightly towards the S. I think we've got to give it towards the S um, because of that. It also has line in, which okay. isn't the most exciting feature on the list, but it is really nope. important. 
If you're shooting events and stuff like that and you want to take a feed from a soundboard, you need line in because they produce too high volume levels for a mic input. They, they, it's just going to be distorted. Um, and unusual, you need yeah. something with a line input level input um, and the GH5S lets you do that. Yeah, so, yeah it goes towards the GH5S. So another thing they up with the GH5S was the amount of slow motion it can yes. do. Yes, um, it's a bit of a jump. It is a bit, it's of, a bit jump. of a jump. <laughs> what is it, 240? 240 versus 180 on the GH5. Um, 180, okay. 180. Uh, in the variable frame rate mode. I mean, 180 in that you know, small size of a camera is brilliant. Absolutely. Um, 180 is really slow. 180 yeah. is slower than I would normally go for shooting ordinary things like people and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, wildlife, maybe I would shoot wildlife higher. Things yes. that move faster, faster than we do as humans. Um, if you're shooting birds or butterflies or anything like that, yeah. having a higher, frame, higher rate. frame rate as possible really <laughs> is always going to be great. Um, but 240, 240 is, is faster. They yeah. both so, do 4K 60p. Yep, which is um, fantastic. Absolutely. Um, I love just chucking it up to 50p. It gives you that dreamy yeah. half speed slow motion. And then not having to drop the resolution to get that Being is able to do really 4K. nice. Um, Makes a huge difference. Yeah. No, easily. Uh, it's not. How far do you reckon towards yeah, the GH5S? Because I mean, it's clearly towards the GH5S, yeah, right? Clearly, but it's not a huge amount. I mean, I've never shot with the 240 on the GH5S. It, um, it's soft. It, yeah. It, it, but then so is the 180. 96 on the GH5 was a real sweet spot. That um, mm. that um, was really quite nice slow motion. Um, and I think the GH5S can get a little bit higher without, without getting dropping really quite quality. soft. Okay. Um, but effectively at their highest, I mean, they're both yeah. quite soft. But on paper it does go down slower. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's, they're I mean, still it's, usable. It's going to go, it's gonna go People to the will S, use that. not by a huge amount. I don't cool. Think. So last but not least, let's talk about the convenience a and little bit. Form factor. Yes. I mean, they are both the same form factor. And this is what is often the decider when people are trying to debate between, between these the two. two, is convenience. I see a lot of people going towards the GH5 because of its um, IBIS stabilised sensor. Absolutely. Um, which is fantastic, like because you can then pair it mm -hmm. with the why. lenses as well, which have image stabilisation in them. Um, and they work in partnership, so yes. it gives so, you five so you, axes. You get very... I think they call it dual IS or something like that. Yes. But it, it, they, 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 basically, the camera and the lens will talk to each other and they will work, the stabilisation will work in partnership yep. with some of their more modern Mark II lenses, like this one, the 1235 yep. Mark II. And it works brilliantly. It's brilliantly. It's brilliantly. It is really good stabilisation. Um, I mean, normally when you're shooting video, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be able to sort of stand there and put the camera up to your eye and get a steady shot. Whereas... Without any stabilisation. Yes, yes. That's what I think people do the GH5S a little bit of a disservice for, though, because people see that it hasn't got inbuilt body stabilisation anymore. And, and they, they go, right, completely discard you can't it. stabilise yeah. any shots, you can't do anything handheld, how is this usable as a camera? I'm not yeah. buying it. I certainly think that is so unfair because so many Micro Four Thirds lenses and really nice Micro Four Thirds lenses have image stabilisation there. Absolutely, yeah. like this one, the 12 to 35. Yeah. Beautiful lens, image stabilised. It's in the 35 to 100 f2.8. Yeah. Beautiful lens, image stabilised. And all their primes as well. Yeah. Um, like this one. Yeah. This one's That's a 42.5, yeah. so it's an 85 millimetre equivalent. Beautiful yeah. portrait lens. You wouldn't normally see IS in a lens like that. No. IS here. Very nice. So. That's a real strength of the Micro Four Thirds platform. Yes. And so you can get around this not having a built-in. Yes, the IS is never going to be as good as it no. is on here, but I think it's unfair to say to that you just it say this them. can't yeah. do IS at it's, all. It can. It's it can. Not, it's not just sure. has to have it in the lenses. I mean, so, yeah. that is a big deal for convenience, but there's other things here as well, like yes. the, the low light. Yeah, I mean, huge, huge difference. I mean you are not going to get the performance out of the original GH5 in low light as you will yes. the S. 
you can um, get around the stabilization by having it with an IS lens or yeah. effectively putting on a stabilizer and stuff like that. That's not what these cameras are for yeah. in most cases. In most cases, these are run around, um, just run handheld cameras, type yep. cameras. A lot of people won't want to be using them with gimbals and stuff like that. They are, of course, perfect for using with gimbals yeah, like that because they're, they're so small light. and yep. they're lightweight and very, very capable. Um, but you, my point is that you can get around the no stabilization. Yep, it's not you, quite as good, but there is a workaround and it's still yep. decent and usable. It's not like it's unusable. Um, you can't get around not being as good in low light. No, you can't, especially apart if you're from lighting your subject. Yeah, which obviously. in some situations you just can't do. Um, yeah. It's which always where, better when you can do it. Yep. If you can like situa your situation, you should. <laughs> but, but, I mean, in a pinch, you're going to get much better, much cleaner images out of the S. It's certainly more convenient. Yeah. Both haven't got a record limit. The GH5S does have time code. It's through its flank flash sync, so it's a little bit unconventional, but it's really clever. Yep. Um, but it will give you time code in and out. You can't get anything like that on the GH5. Um, so if you're doing live events and stuff like that, the GH5S is going to be more convenient for yep. you. Um, I think overall it comes down to what would you well, prefer to have? It's, it's, well, like, like any of these sort of points, it's a, it comes down to personal preference and what's right for you at the end of the day. Which um, would you choose? What For convenience, only for convenience, what do you think is more convenient, low light or image stabilization? I mean, I'm going to throw in the age-old answer of it depends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> recent, like recently for the, the video I did for the media production show, I did choose the GH5 because I knew I was going to be running around a hell of a lot more in between crowds. And that's crowds. interesting. And it was, it was very, yes. It's quite dark in there. Uh, Trade shows are always fairly it dimly lit. It was lighter than what you think. OK. Um, if it was, I mean, uh, the PSC show back in February, was a lot darker, and I don't think I would have chosen GH5 mm. for that because it was that much darker. Um, so it does come. But down. we've got the luxury of being able to we choose do, between the two we of them. Do. If you didn't, if you had to buy one, take it away, and you would never see the other one again. I might go for the S yes because of the colours, though. Yeah, and that's oh, the whole that. thing. It's Let's talk about convenience. Thing. It's a whole different thing. But I think I would choose the low light for convenience rather yes. than the image stabilization because you can use it and I would use it with the lenses. Yeah, I mean... It's not just I can check on an IS you... lens, which is a bit of a slower aperture, but it will get me out of a pinch. The good lenses that I would want to be using anyway have IS in them. Yes. That's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. I want to I give it towards you, the S. You want to give it towards the I do want to give it towards the S. I, You're right. I don't, I don't want to choose. <laughs> I do like them both, but... We have given lots of them towards the S, though. Maybe this is the 5's turn. Oh. I know people oh, will draw? be angry with this if we don't give it towards the 5, because yeah, no, people yeah. really do like that inbody oh, body stabilisation. Oh, he's giving in. Maybe. <laughs> Should we people please and choose the 5? Uh, I guess we could. It doesn't really make a difference. Let's give it ever so slightly <laughs> towards the 5. Oh. You sure? I don't want to give it a draw. Oh. No. You know what I think? Because... No, no draws. <laughs> we give it to one of them. Let's make a decision. Okay. okay. And I'm we'll, saying we'll, five. We've already made it. Very slightly. Yeah. Very slightly. So, overall, I think we chose the S more often I than we, we did the five. did. I mean... I prefer it. I mean, I, I've, I've shot with it. I've shot all those the bags videos of it mm -hmm. and it was you know nice and enough to use for that it, absolutely the, the picture was lovely um, um i've shot quite a bit with both cameras and i i've all as a whole been much happier with the stuff i've been shooting with the s. 5s yeah. than i have with the 5 just in terms of the colors in terms of the sharpness in terms of everything like that and i don't mean that it's more sharp it's not the 5 no. is really really sharp but i think it's nicer sharpness somehow. It doesn't yes. feel over sharp, okay. it doesn't feel di as digital as the GH5 a little bit. It, I think the GH5S has got a really nice quality to its images. Yeah. Add to that the low light and I think it's much nicer in terms of the image performance. It does come yeah, down the, to the, 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 the image from it. 
is, I think, hands down nicer. The GH5S is better on all aspects other than the stabilization yeah. and the price. Yeah. So, is the dropping the input body stabilization and having to rely on the lenses in exchange for nicer pictures worth paying more for your camera? And I don't think we can answer that. No, you, you can't. I mean, I it, it's, only it's they all, can answer that. It is all down to how, because it, you, you shoot. Because if you're gonna, if you're going super, super run and gun, the camera as it is on its own, and you're going to be relying on the IBIS, which I think a lot of people. Oh, a do, lot do. of people do. A lot yeah, of people like do. Lot of people These really are handheld do. cameras. Um, like for, for you know weddings and stuff like that, where mm -hmm. especially when you, not not so much when it comes to the low light, but when you're outside and you're in the heat of the moment and you're running mm -hmm. around, going mad, getting what you can, the convenience on that with the IBIS is going to, like for a lot of people, going to sway them towards that. Yep. But then again, you've got the low light and the colour. So if I was shooting weddings though, I would just use this. For the, yeah, for the low light. Because yeah. the low light, and that does make a huge difference in I mean, weddings. They make a good pair. No, they do make it's, a good it's, pair. It's, it's, if you can one, have both, it's, it's one thing that they do we haven't discussed. They do complement each other really nicely. Um, that's a very good point. Very good point. Yeah, as a as a system, having them both are great because you can have the same lenses, mm -hmm. um, and Absolutely. you can swap them out to their strengths. Yeah. Um, if we were shooting weddings as a pair, us yep. two, and we had to have a camera each, having one of each of them, yeah, yes, would it's, make it's, a, it's lot a of sense. brilliant little um, make a lot of sense setup. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, we, that's very interesting. Hopefully that has helped yes. a little bit for you guys choosing between two. I know it's a topic that's talked about an awful lot, yep. these yep, two yep. cameras. And people are still going to be uh, oh, choosing we were, between two. It's, it's yeah, we won't have fixed it. No, it's <laughs> never. It's always it's a personal preference thing, really, as with any sort of camera choices. Yep. If you want to try either of them out, you're more than welcome to come into the showroom and physically get your hands on with both of these cameras yourself. Yep. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below to let us know what you think of this new series. And we'll yep. see you in the next one. See you next time.